Good day, Grade 9s. This is a revision lesson on price theory. I want to give credit to Mrs. Renal Boyens from the YouTube channel EMS Made Fun, who developed these slides. So we are going to look at the revision for price theory. And as you know that this module looked at how the concepts of demand and supply influences market prices. So market prices are influenced by demand and supply. As you know from grade eight and from grade nine, we have spoken about the economic problem of scarcity. And because there's an economic problem of scarcity, what it basically means is that there's, there's an unlimited demand for goods, but only a limited supply of goods. If we look at resources, there's an unlimited demand for certain resources, but there's only a limited supply and that is the economic problem of scarcity so consumers have unlimited wants and needs but there's only a limited amount of supply so the forces of demand and supply continuously um, basically pushes against one another and this leads to the creation of markets so demand and supply are market forces that determine prices so prices are determined by demand and supply how much people want how much they are willing to pay for something that's demand and how much suppliers are willing to supply at a certain price so prices are determined in the consumer market and in the factor market remember the consumer market is where we sell goods and services and the factor market is where factors of production are sold factors of production again what is that entrepreneurship, labor, natural resources, capital, those are the factors of production sold in the factor market. Okay, now we're going to look at demand. What is the definition of demand? Demand is the quantity of goods and services that consumers will buy at a specific price at a specific time. So what influences demand? Time and price. So note, demand for a product is not the same as a need or a want. Most people want things that they cannot afford. These wants do not represent a demand for the product as they cannot afford to pay for them. Okay, so you will not demand something if you cannot pay for it. So demand is directly linked to price. Okay. So what is the demand schedule? Can you still remember in the previous slides I've shown you that table? Um, it's a table that shows you the quantity demanded at different prices. It's that table. So that is the demand schedule. And usually you take this demand schedule and you draw a demand curve, which is explained in one of the slides that I've also attached to your lessons. Okay, so what is the law of demand? You need to know this. It will be asked in the test. The law of demand states that when the price of products increase, the demand will decrease. Okay, so the more expensive things become, the less people will be willing to buy it. So that is also why we said in the previous slide of this lesson that demand is not linked to wants because if you want something, it's nice to have, and usually you do not have money for it, so you don't really demand it. So demand is the minute you decide you are going to definitely buy something, then the price of that product will influence your demand, and that brings us to the law of demand. When, things, when the price of things increases, you will then not want to buy it anymore. That's why you're going to search for a shop that sells it at the best price that you are willing to pay. Okay, so let's just quickly say again, the law of demand states that when the price of a product increases, demand will decrease. When the price of a product decreases, the demand for the product will increase. Okay, so the more cheaper things become, or the less it costs, the more you will demand, or the more you will be willing to buy it. But the more expensive a product becomes, the less you will be willing to pay for it. So your demand will decrease. Okay, so at the bottom of the slide, this means that there is an inverse relationship 
between the price and quantity demanded. It's a negative slope. What does negative slope mean? As you can see there, it, it, it goes down. Okay, so you will see that it doesn't, it, it starts from the, from the um, top and then it slopes down, downwards. Okay, so it's a negative slope. And that slope basically shows us the law of demand. Because if you would take that slope and you would put it on a L graph, remember the, the horizontal graph is your quantity demanded and your vertical line is your price. So you will see that the higher the price, the less will be demanded. Okay. So the demand curve slants downwards. Remember D for down, the demand curve. Okay, so here you will see that at the right-hand side, at the top, where there's a table that says price and quantity demanded, that is called the demand schedule. So you take the demand schedule, and from the demand schedule, you you, you plot it on the L graph, and then you will have a demand curve. Okay, and in one of the lessons, it has been explained. What is important also is that you remember that, the dem that any L curve with regards to demand and supply, the vertical line is always the price, and the horizontal line always depicts the quantity demanded or quantity supplied, depending on what you are drawing. At the end of this um, two lessons of demand and supply, we're going to teach you how to draw both demand and supply onto one graph so that you will be able to determine the equilibrium points. Okay, but we will get there. Okay, so what is the, for, for the law of demand to be true, the following must stay the same. The amount of money consumers have, advertising and the price of other products, complementary, or substitute products. Okay, now what is complementary or substitute products? Complementary products is, is like toothpaste and a toothbrush. They complement one another. Or a sponge and soap. Substitute products is like butter and margarine. If you can't afford butter, you will buy margarine. Okay. So now, if complementary products are also like when you buy a razor and you need to buy the razor blades with it. Okay. So first we're going to look um, at the amount of money consumers have. How much of a product consumers buy depends on how much money they have. If consumers' incomes are high, they tend to buy more. And if the income are low, they buy less. So this proves to us that the law of demand is true. Okay. Secondly, the advertising determines how much of the product the consumers buy. If advertising is effective, consumers demand more of the product. And if it's not effective, they demand less. Again, the law of demand. Then the price of other products. The price of other products can also affect how much of the product consumers purchase. For example, if the price of petrol increases, the demand for cars will decrease. Again, the law of demand, because it has to do with complementary products. The price of substitute products can affect the demand for certain products. So if you want to go and buy a razor at a shop for your, for your father, for Father's Day, a nice, smart razor, and you see that you buy the razor for, let's say, 80 Rand, but to buy um, a set of razor blades, it's going to cost 200 rand every month. Then obviously it will influence your demand because the blades, which is a complementary product, is expensive. So therefore, your demand for that razor will decrease or will be eliminated. So you will not want to buy the the razor because the blades are so expensive. And the same as substitute products. If the price of pure butter increases, then the demand for margarine will increase. Okay, so as people will buy a cheaper substitute. So again, the law of demand is proven here. Okay, so these, these three aspects proves that the law of demand is true.
Weather conditions also plays a role. The weather can also affect the quantity of products that consumers buy. For example, you will not want to buy a uh, um, heater in the middle of the summer. Okay, so if the temperature increases, you will obviously not, your, your demand for a heater will decrease. But in this winter, like today when it's really, really cold, your demand for, for a heater will increase. Fashion trends the same, okay? If new phones become fashionable, then de the demand for those phones will increase. If, if it's not a fashion trend anymore, then it will, your demand will decrease. Changes in taste and habits or preferences will also influence demand. Okay, then future price expectations. If you have an expectation for now after the coronavirus that um, the prices of houses will decrease, you will not be willing to pay, let's say, 2.7 million rand for a house. If you know that in a few months' time, uh, there might be expectation that the price of that house will be 1.2 million. Okay, so that will increase your demand for buying houses now because you have an expectation that the price might decrease in future. Okay, so future price expectation will also um, prove to you that the demand, the law of demand is due. I've attached a activity for you to please complete. I will look at it as soon as you, we as teachers will look at it as soon as you come back to school. You must give a definition for the term demand. Please refer back to your slides, explain the law of demand, and then refer to the demand schedule below and answer the questions. Okay. At the price of 250 Rand, you will find the price on the vertical axis or the Y axis. And then you must tell me what is the quantity demanded for sweatpants, which will be found, at, you, you will find it on the X axis, there where the quantity demanded um, on, the, on the horizontal axis where it is listed. Okay, then you must determine the price if the quantity demanded is 350. So there you have to look at the X axis or the horizontal axis at 350, what the price would be for the sweatpants that will be, de that will be um, demanded. Then number four, I've given you a demand schedule and you must draw your own graph. Please try this. Um, I will explain it to you once you get back to school. If you have any questions, you are welcome to ask on the, the um, classroom, the Google Classroom app, and you are welcome to ask questions there and we will answer it. Okay, enjoy your day. Goodbye.